Good morning and welcome to a new week and thank you for joining us on GMNC this morning. I'm Taryn Woods, your anchor for today's show. Joining me in studio this morning is Claudia Greenwood, who will be kicking and starting your day with a week full of powerful inspiration. Neville and Helen from Ngondlo Reptile Park take up their Monday morning slot and today we learn more about the vine snakes. The Rise Up Movement's Josh Daniel takes a seat opposite me and we speak about a serious issue surrounding gender-based violence, their petition to government and upcoming silent demonstration. And before we chat to him today, I'd like to wish him a very, very happy birthday from the Belito TV team. There's no stopping the dynamic Brett Michelin, co-founder of Mozambique Group of Restaurants, and I look forward to catching up with him and finding out what's been happening on the Mozambique restaurant front since we last chatted. Next up on the line is Johannes von Skolfeig from RPSS Medical Rescue, who will be providing us with valuable information relating to heart attacks and strokes. It's then over to Matt Williams, our sports anchor for all things sport, followed by the weather and surf report with Haley Ace and Dion Bossman from Victory Surf. The show ends off with a music video from Kodasi and McQuingua, and then it's over to our kids slot with Laugh Out Larry. Over to you, Claudia. How are you this morning? Fine, and you? I'm well, thank you. Have a good weekend. Yes, awesome, Taryn. Just goes so quickly. It does, doesn't it? Yes. Hopefully yes. it's a good week ahead for us. Yes, let's get into it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so today's topic is going to be around uh, captaining your own ship. Um, so I'm drawing the analogy of a captain, you know, yes. in um, steering a ship and versus our life. And how do we lead and direct our, ourselves in our own lives? So if we think about a captain of a ship, what are his responsibilities? And that's very much so taking ultimate responsibility and accountability for everything um, yes. regarding the ship, where the ship is going, but also the maintenance of the ship and um, you know, all the workings and, and functioning of the ship. Now, if we look at our own lives, um, when we um, allow ourselves to be influenced by other people, constantly, yeah. and we're not sure of ourselves, we cause absolute chaos in our lives. Because we're not living truly to ourselves. Really, yeah. um, that comes up often when we doubt ourselves, um, and we tend to want to speak to somebody else or get somebody else's opinion, and maybe even just we're seeking approval yes. because we're judging ourselves. And that happens so often, doesn't it? You and kind of veer off and then you find your way back again. Yes, and, and that's okay to, and it's great to find your way back again. Unfortunately, sometimes we tend to get stuck in that, thinking, you know what, if I don't show up like this or if I don't like, um, you know, going to a particular place or if I don't do a particular hobby like somebody else does or even, you know, choose a career in a, in a certain line, then I'm not going to be accepted. And we talk to ourselves like that, and often we, what we do is we try and steer our lives in a way to please others. We must stop being people pleasers. Um, please ourselves. You know, just take on being the captain of your own ship and reduce that anxiety within yourself. Because when we try and live according to other people's wishes um, and to try and fit in, what we're doing is putting ourselves aside and what's important to ourselves. And it's okay to be different. Yeah. It's okay to, you know, choose a different career path. It's okay to speak differently. It's okay to wear something differently. So my, my message here is, you know what, you, you want to reduce your stress. You want to be happy and feel fulfilled within yourself. So you need to stop giving away your personal power. Stop just listening to other people and say, you know what, let me be the captain of my own ship. It's okay. Everybody has different needs at different times and rise up for yourself. Um, that way, you'll actually feel fulfilled at the end of the day. Own the day, own your life, own where you're going because who's going to be there to steer your ship if you listen to five other people? No one but you at the end of the day. Exactly. So, as a start to the week, just reflecting who's steering your ship, who's captaining your ship, and go in a direction that brings you fulfillment and you happiness, and you'll find your stress reduces, and suddenly you'll feel that happiness within, um, and that you're achieving something great for yourself, not for others. I absolutely love that, Claudia. It's, it's so spot on, and what a good way to start off the week. I mean, we all, we all lose track. We all, we all kind of take a lot of what other people say. We kind of, what in Africa says, ah, good, other opinions as more than your own at the end of the day, you know? Yes, We find yes. value in someone else's opinion more than yourself. 
And unfortunately, it does. It, 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 it knocks your confidence down. You start questioning yourself for self-worth, where you should be going, mm -hmm. because you know other people know more about yourself than you at the, end of, at the end of the day. And that's not nice. People shouldn't really be doing that. And I think you, a lot of people take a bit of a back foot when it comes to that. I know I've been guilty of it. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of have to move those people out of your lives too. Don't you feel that those are kind of negative people that tend to give you your horrible feedback and give you the 10 cent side on the side? And mm. like you say, you lose control of your own ship. You're not the captain mm. of your own life anymore because mm. you're living for others, which is just so sad, isn't it? Yes, and it, it puts you under a lot of pressure because it's difficult to rise up to yeah. other people's expectations all the time. Um, you know, you actually start becoming a person who you're not. Yes. And that's where you question yourself and often we even say, you know what, I can't do this or I, I must do more for that person because they need it. I don't want to upset them. But in the meantime, you're upsetting yourself and you keep putting yourself aside. Yeah. So embrace that personal power, take it in as a strength and just acknowledge yourself and do things for yourself. It, it doesn't mean that you need to be nasty to other people. Just acknowledge that we're yeah. different and embrace, embrace. yourself. Exactly. exactly. And your individuality and... Do what gives you happiness it. and joy, and that's where you'll get your full, full, yeah, yeah, full fulfillment. This message has been so inspirational. I think it's such a way to kickstart the week. Mm. Thank you so, so much. Awesome. Guys, take your, head, take your life back, embrace every moment, embrace who you are. We're all unique, and there's nothing wrong with that, and that's what makes you special. Just want to say thank you so much to our performance coffee sponsors. Our coffee every morning is absolutely delicious. As you can see, we are all kickstarted here with our morning coffee. Thank you to our dealer, Jora Coffee Machines and Salt Rock Coffee as our morning show coffee sponsors. We absolutely are so grateful for you early in the mornings. We're going to go to a quick ad break, and after the ad break, we're going to be speaking to Neville and Helen from John Law Reptile Park. <laughs> Welcome back to our Good Morning North Coast show. In studio with me this morning, we welcome back Neville and Helen. Welcome back to our studio. Oh, thank you. Are you all well rested? Yeah. Nice and well, busy well, weekend? Yes, a good weekend. <laughs> oh, a fantastic. good weekend, yes. Fantastic. Absolutely. So today's topic is the beautiful vine snake. Now, I know mm -hmm. a little bit about it. Neville, do you want to teach us more about our vine snake friend no, here? We're, we're going to chat about him. I, I, I want to take him out because he's just such a spectacular animal. And then I'm not going to keep him out for long. We're just yes. going to show the cameras and you can have a look. And now you don't have to hold this one, all right? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> These um, snakes are highly venomous. That's correct. And um, I do just want to say that there's a difference between being highly venomous and deadly and dangerous. You know, it's three different concepts. And... Um, it's not the same thing. Okay. But just have a look at this. Now he's, he's showing he's um, feeling threatened. So he's inflating that throat. I mean, that, just look at that. And okay, don't worry that too much. the red tongue with the black tip on. Yeah, the red tongue. That's one of his key IDs. And then he's got this beautiful um, mask. I mean, 
long before Corona came along, he already had his mask on <laughs> and he was ready so for the show. So he was the trendsetter. <laughs> yes, a beautiful mask and that green on the on the on the top of the head there. Uh, sure. Very cryptically marked, extremely well like camouflaged. Mask, no. It actually looks like a tree's bark. Absolutely, absolutely. They they often mimic the vegetation that they're on. So if they're on a piece of on on a shrub or something that's got um, a lot of little branches and kinks in it, yes. they'll actually contort their body to take the shape. Oh wow! And so they're perfectly camouflaged. The snake is capable of living in your garden for 10 years. You don't even know he's there. Really? You walk past him twice a day. Every third day, you tap him on the head as you go by. <laughs> and he sits there and he says, ooh, so, uh, the th box lost again. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, um, I mean, now that you said that, would they not feel disturbed? I mean, if you walk past them in the bush, are they not quite aggressive? They're quite chilled snakes. No. They won't come and attack me. Aggression belongs to humans and primates. There we go. That's it. And, so um, you know, animals don't, don't experience aggression. Um, they will bite when they feel threatened. Okay. Then they will bite. And that's when kids run around like, ooh, check this nice stick, and they pick it up. Okay. Then okay. there's a risk. So there's no, yes. You know, and your, your cat comes and interferes with them, although cats are clever enough to avoid venomous stuff. That's great. I heard that the other day as well. Cats know. No, and um, dogs, unfortunately. Not so much. No, no. <laughs> but um, yeah, bites are really serious. No antivenom for this. That's what I heard. Apparently, what is your time frame from bite well, to? This is where where we get to describing the difference between dangerous, deadly, and venomous. Okay. You see, the most venomous species are those that require the least amount of venom to achieve a fatal result. Okay. Okay. That doesn't make it dangerous because they very rarely bite somebody. Okay, and then it doesn't make him deadly because you haven't had a fatality for 35 years. Really? You know. Wow. So although there's no antivenom, we're still very capable of treating the bites. Okay. And um, the venom, although extremely toxic, is very slow acting. So you've got a long time frame. You know, imagine sitting at a picnic, the bite sack comes along, you pick it up, it bites you, and everybody wants to r rush you off to hospital and say, no, 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 the horse is only halfway down and I still have two beers left. You know, I've still got time it. in my favor. Yeah, I'll, I'll go when that's done, sort of thing. Oh, it, wow. It's not like a black mama that bites you that's and uh, at, at uh, 9 o'clock and you're actually in trouble at 22 9 already, you know? Oh. Gosh, yes, no. So that's the difference. And he's quite relaxed now, isn't he? Yeah, he's relaxed now, sort of settled down. Um, yeah. And how long do they get, or how big do they get? <laughs> the individual, just like us. So you're always going to have the taller guys and the shorter so guys. There's no standard. So we sort of like to work on an average. Yes. You know? And this would be a medium average. Okay. For adult. Sure, it's still quite right? long. Yeah, it's, it's quite a long snake. You know, in totality, it's about 1.1 meters. I mean, look at, there's the end of the tail. Yeah. You see, so in yeah, totality, yeah. It's, it's about 1.1 meters. I don't like being touched on the end of the tail, so you can see it's <laughs> immediately like, hey, that's my tail. So they obviously live in the trees. Yeah. They live hardly ever on the ground. You'll find them in, in the air. <laughs> they, they very rarely go high. Okay. So they, w they want to be in low scrub, no shrubs, and... Um, they also um, go to ground quite often. He's a, a snake that, that's uh, quite Catholic in taste, so he'll literally eat anything. He's not um, particularly restricted to any... Uh, this one's going to be difficult. <laughs> that okay. was going to be my next question. What, what do they eat? What do they... Yeah, they, their diet is predominantly lizards. Okay. But they also love to eat um, the little harmless bush snakes. Okay. And um, they'll take fledgling birds. But as you can appreciate, birds aren't all, the, the fledglings aren't always available. Yes. And so um, you'll find that it's only in the nesting season that these are really available. And that's a short period of time. Okay. It's not a, a period that... It's not a, a, a long period of time, so it's definitely not their main diet frame. Okay. And, and when are they most visible to the eye? Well, or is it more 
seasonals um, and whenever they feel like coming out of the they, bush they, they or there's certain... They're sort of coming active now. In the so summer. you see incidences more and more and more. We had one yesterday. Oh, really? And, and um, you know, so they're all becoming more active now. Okay. Normally, November, December, we would expect to catch anywhere up to about 30 or 40 of these in, in a very short space of time. And, and, and the, the vine snake, tell me, has it got a, a scientific name? Or is it just more known as a, a vine snake? There is a scientific name. The Latin just is over your head. <laughs> you know? uh, most people can't pronounce it. Really? And, um, yeah, so we, because our, our, our target here is the lay person who doesn't really understand too much and they're not too involved, we speak of the common names rather than the scientific the names. Scientific names, yes. You yeah. know, so it becomes very, very confusing actually. <laughs> Uh, just as a, as a quick example, uh, Bitter's rhinoceros is a West African gaboon adder, but then you have a rhinoceros viper, which is Bitter's nasocornus. Oh and no, and that's and very confusing. That, yeah, like way yeah. over, long gone over there. So <laughs> now when you start speaking about <laughs> pandemic names, it's, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Neville, Helen. Thank you so much. Once again, it's always good having you in studio. And I think the education behind the snakes is something that we all should be well aware of. I mean, like I said, a lot of us just, oh, it's a snake, you know? Yeah. Almost dads, for instance, oh, it's just a green snake or a house snake. It's harmless. Meanwhile, <laughs> there's so much behind certain snakes. And yeah. really, seeing them up close, look, you guys know I'm petrified of snakes. <laughs> <laughs> but seeing them up and close, they are really beautiful. And I mean, they, they've no. created a certain way with the patterns and the mask and the red tongue with the black tip. It really is a special creature. And thank you so much for coming and educating all of us. And guys, if you ever come across a vine snake, rather call Helen and Neville, let them come and assist you. Please don't do anything to harm yourself or the snakes in that being of sense. And if you ever need them relocated, please phone in Glondlo Reptile Park to come and help you. Thank you so Super. much, boy donkey. We're going to go to a quick ad break. And on our way back, we're going to have Joshua Daniel with From the Rise Up Movement. See you soon. <laughs> Have you heard about Finlay Fuels program that empowers your small business or your family through a cashback benefit on your monthly fuel spend? I'm excited to tell you that no matter what the size of your small business fleet or the number of cars in your family, all you need to do is simply refuel your vehicle at participating BP service stations countrywide and the saving of 70 cents per litre on diesel and 13 cents per litre on petrol can be yours. There are no credit checks because the program follows a prepaid model. And voila, let me show you how easy it is. To sign up, visit www.finlayfuel.co.za. Upon completion of your sign-up, you will receive an SMS notification confirming your membership. Arrive at the BP forecourt, identify yourself as a Finlay Field client. Enter your secure PIN into the terminal handed to you by the attendant. The attendant will scan your BP Fleet Move tag and a pre-authorization slip will be issued. Fuel will then be dispensed. and a real-time SMS notification will be sent to you confirming the transaction. And off you go. Hi, Belito. I'm Tanya. I'm the lady from So It Seems, Benina in Belito. Find us in Richard Park, right across from the Hirsch. The new shop. It's three times bigger than the old shop. We have lots more fabric, a lot more haberdashery items. If you can't sew, I will teach you how to sew. I have an additional teacher that helps us sew. And we have a fabulous space upstairs. Looking for a banana machine or a banet? I will sort you out with that one. 
In this little area, we do everything. We service the sewing machine, we service the overlocker. We fix it up for you. Within a week, you'll have it back. While you go through the pattern books, we have a coffee shop in-house called Buttonless Coffee. You can have a coffee or a snack to eat while you do your pattern searching, fabric searching, or sewing upstairs with us. See you soon! Welcome back and thank you for joining us in studio. Ernest Rero, watching on Facebook, a very good morning to you and thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning, Joshua, how are you? Good morning, good. Thank you for having us. No, it's a pleasure to hear from the Rise Up Movement. Do you want to tell Correct. us a bit more about it? Well, the Rise Up Movement is founded on gender-based violence, human trafficking, child abuse and sustainable living. Uh, in recent events, gender-based violence is now the new pandemic in South Africa. Looking at our current stats that took place, we have already had over, t over 10,000 cases on domestic violence. Our rape has increased by 74%. 74%? rape increase. And uh, we, as much as we can produce stats and we can say that over 200 plus uh, rape cases took place based on alcohol abuse, irrespective of whether you are consuming alcohol irrespective of whether a woman what she wears or how she you know, carries herself rape is a human right violation it should not be happening it shouldn't be no. happening period no, I agree. On that. and it is constant growth when it comes to GBV uh, with that in mind we look at our 2020 stats yeah. as of October from October to December there was already 12,000 rapes 12,000 and domestic Gee. violence is to a point of this year's quarterly stats we had about 193 murders that related to domestic violence Gee. so this is not a, like a it's not a joke no it is we want to bring more awareness because we believe that awareness brings empowerment and when you got empowerment you have knowledge and Gee. you can eradicate the myth from the fact and I, and I think, Joshua, the worst thing about those stats, sorry for interrupting, is the fact that those are the only reported statistics. 100% correct. Other women are too scared to come. Of, yeah. Absolutely correct. And it's been, it's like an uphill battle when it comes to, you know, awareness campaign, because we have a lot of people in our communities and even in society as well. Yeah, we know about gender-based violence. Yes. But we, they're not actually understanding it could happen to, to a family friend. It could yeah. happen to a sister, yeah. a mum, and so forth. And after months and months, Taryn, of uh, emails to government, eventually we just said, you know what, this is enough now. Let's try emailing directly to our president. And from his office, mind you, we actually got a reply back that our petition for gender-based violence and the points that we actually raised on stringent measures need to be you know, reviewed and they took it into consideration with our that staff. That is fantastic. Yes, I mean, we have over 197,000 rape kits that are still waiting to be processed. Now, that is uncalled for. Why, I mean, yeah, why the delay? I mean, surely if our statistics are so incredibly high, surely they should be pushing us. <sighs> exactly. And it's always, it's a story of, you know, uh, it's got to go from one department to another and another. And from that, it automatically becomes contaminated exactly you, you actually can't use it and no. thereafter you got victims that are in and out of court in and out of court waiting to get their you know uh, case reviewed and so forth and we actually petitioning that you should rape kits within 24 hours should be made available it should be uh, bail hearings should be granted after investigation I too agree many with times you, you have the alleged perpetrators yeah. who come out and they're after that they are bullying or victimizing the victims of and course because so now you don't want to go ahead 100 yeah. percent correct yeah. and from there also we have people that do misuse the system as well too for their own benefit I can, I can and imagine. we are asking that any victim or alleged victim who misuse the system should be find or a criminal record should be put because yes. resources are being wasted and then the genuine cases get Obviously painted get in the same brush exactly. as well too. And that's one of the biggest problems that we have in our country is that yes, you know what, 
that one lied about rape or that one gave misinformation, all the same. It doesn't follow that no, way. No, it doesn't. So, uh, yeah, it's actually been coming up and uh, more awareness in our community is taking place and uh, networking with our local policing, Absolutely. especially with Amshlali, SAPS, yes. Kwadakusa, and also the Glendale. We actually uh, making headways to bring in that awareness campaigns and also identifying the different forms of GBV. It's not only the sexual part of it. You've got the psychological part of it. Yes. You've got the abuse part of yeah. it. And that You've sometimes is worse, the psychological it, side of things. Absolutely well. correct. Yes. And uh, yeah, so we actually want to, we actually bring in more awareness into that. Uh, also advising uh, young women as, and our mums and so forth and future mothers as well to, yes. you know, uh, the so-called different avenues to look at. And if you know of something that's taking place, don't turn her face. No. Don't turn a blind eye on it no. and so forth. Act on it and so No, yeah. I completely agree. Coming back to the stats, you say there's 190,000 odd kids we're waiting for, but don't you feel that stat is so incredibly high? It there is. shouldn't be so many rape cases happening. It shouldn't. At the end of the day. 100% correct. I mean, it's so shocking. And then I know you guys are coming in to change the law aspect of things. What exactly is the twitch or the change that you guys are trying to make in the law? Uh, one of the things is that uh, uh, perpetrators, yes. let's use a proper term of it, yes. perpetrators found guilty should have a register and you should be actually listed on the register with your name and shame on it. Oh, I'm going to be honest with you yes. on that. Yes, we same as in South Africa, we do have a uh, register for pedophiles. However, that list is not made available to the public. It's okay. only upon request from the Justice Department. That's if you need, like if a person's applying for a job or so forth, yes, you can request that I list. See. But personally, we feel that it should be made available to the public when it comes to pedophiles. In the same way yes. for GBV cases as well. So if you are found guilty, yes. that list should be made, uh, you should be put onto that list. Yeah. And also the so-called sentencing uh, in law, it's human rights violation. We, I would prefer 25 years and above because you have violated a person, you forced yourself onto a person. Yes. And irrespective of, you know, ethnic groups and uh, that kind of a entity of it, your mindset, you yeah. chose to rape a woman. It was the deed It was, was your done. choice. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't happen mistake. No. So, you, yeah, you have to suffer that consequences. Of course. I mean, I you're taking away someone's dignity. You hurt, you damage the entire being of the person okay. who's going to take sometimes years and yeah. some of them actually don't even recover from it. Yeah, and suicide attempts after something 100%. like that also increases. And People can't live we with want, themselves. Yes, and then we yeah. want our perpetrators, okay, that's fine. They can, can just walk, walk around, walk around the street. Do that again. And, and then so he does that to your daughter or your friend or absolutely whatever. Correct. And he just walks on the streets. It's absolutely shocking. It is. It and is. then I know, I know the silent protest is coming out. Yes. Do you want to tell our viewers Finally. all about the silent protest? Uh, actually, we were actually waiting for our levels to come down for our COVID-19. Because course. one of the things that we actually uh, mandate throughout KZN is silent demonstrations in various areas. Mm -hmm. And as soon as the lockdown actually said, okay, uh, you know, uh, the levels have come down. We did our application with our KDM municipality and we were given the uh, go ahead to have a silent demonstration on the 24th of September at uh, Tiffany's uh, at Tiffany's intersection. Oh, okay. Tiffany's yes, Spa yes, intersection. Yes. And uh, what we're going to do is that we're inviting the community people to come through, stand on placard boards and so. While we're doing that, we're also going to be distributing flyers okay. on that with relevant information for people to have on end. SAPS Amshlali is on board with us, uh, Glendale, Kwadakusa. We've also got the uh, SAPS trauma unit uh, that will be coming counselors as well. So just to hand out oh, flyers, amazing. we actually want to give more empowerment, more knowledge, because more knowledge, like we said, is, you know, you exactly know what to do. I don't, uh, pre, uh, w w w one of the things that actually gets to me is that when a victim has to go to a police station and sit there at the charge office, Waiting, waiting, waiting. Yeah. yeah, you've got information. This is the person the direct to deal contact, with. Yes, point of contact. To deal with. So fabulous. Move up, you know what I mean? And yes. uh, it was good to have our Quadacusa or say the Lemba cluster police 
forum they're all involved to I mean, come on board and say that you know what no we definitely want to be isn't that community this. just amazing yeah. we're all staying together absolutely the silent demonstration will definitely make waves and definitely make a difference to many people's lives definitely Joshua, absolutely what you guys does. are doing is absolutely incredible well, and good you. luck with everything guys come out and support the movement on the 24th of september 24th. at tiffany spa um, intersection Wishing you a beautiful birthday further, Joshua. Thank, <laughs> thank you so you. much for giving up your birthday morning to spend some time with us. Maybe awesome. blessed you further for you. Thank you, ma'am. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. Cool. Guys, let's not forget to support them on the 24th of September. We're going to go to a quick ad break. And after the break, we've got Brett Michelin from the Mozambique Group. We'll be right back. Broken down and tired of living life on the merry-go-round. And you can't find a fighter, but I see it in you, so we can walk it out. Move mountains, we can walk it out and move mountains. And I rise up, I rise like the day, I rise up, I rise unafraid, I rise up, and I do it a thousand eight times again. And I rise up, I like the waves, I rise up, in spite of the ache, I rise up, and I do it. Welcome back and thank you for joining us on Belito TV's Good Morning North Coast show. In studio with me, I've got Brett Michelin from the Mozambique Group. Brett, thank you once again for being in studio with us. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Good. It's always good having you here. How was the weekend? Um, yeah, it was good. Actually, the restaurants are picking up a lot. Fantastic. And I think it's not just it's not Mozambique, I'm talking about it, but restaurants yes. in general. So, yes. so I think COVID's sort of dropping away now as far as regulations coming down and so on. Like so we've definitely seen a big spike in the restaurants. Jeez, that's yeah. great because I know the last time we spoke, I mean, it was awful, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, especially the curfew now being extended by an hour will make a big impact on the restaurant. So group. the great thing is they extended the curfew by the hour, but they, they extended the liquor trading by two hours. Yeah, oh, fantastic. So that's helped a hell of a lot as well. Yeah, because yeah. you don't want people leaving by 8 o'clock. I mean, yeah. that's, when people, that's when, come, when people come. And that's yeah. when people want to be jolly and festive and yeah. enjoy themselves. Fred, so there's a lot happening in the Mozambique yeah. group, especially here locally, down yeah. below us at the Belvista Centre here. How beautiful is the building looking? It's striking and stunning. It's looking great. We've got so much work ahead of us. So it's going to be done in stages. This will be the first phase now. And there's about three stages, phases through to, to complete the whole, the whole, the whole restaurant. Yes. But now we're going to start off small. Uh, yes. It's going to be about 180 seats. Um, I spent a lot of time on the design of that shop and so on, just yes. making sure that I, I brought a, an artist up from Cape Town who's done a couple of our shops there to do the walls. Um, it's going to be a really, really cool feeling. I've got a lot of local, a lot of the local brands involved as far as um, 
uh, gin, beer, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, getting involved as well. So yeah, that's always good to support local. The guys yeah. love it. I mean, we have to do that. We have to look after sure. our local guys. Yeah, and then I saw on Facebook, and another word on the street is your Texas branch in the states. Yeah. That is stunning. I love what you guys did there with the Nelson Mandela. What is yeah. it? Little pillars. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's done really, really well. So my business partner Ryan uh, has been in America for now for two and a half years, yeah. and he's uh, he bought into a brand called Pelly Pelly. Um, so what's basically happened is they've been changing Pelly Pelly over to the Mozambiques now. So, oh, so they've got they've got the two shops there. Both both stores closed down for revamp. We've opened the first one in in, in Woodlands, and the second one will be in, in the Galleria Mall in, Jeez, in that's Houston. Amazing. It's so good. I mean, there's so many South Africans abroad, and everyone it's wants crazy. a touch of Mozambique at it's home. It's crazy how many South Africans in the in in our Woodland store are. Our old customers from Mozambique, Belito. Really? Never mind Belito. The, In never general, mind Mozambique. The, all our the, local guys, yeah. But 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 actual local Mozam uh, guys from Belito. So it's, it's just been that really sense cool. Of you feel at home when you walk into such a place, yeah. isn't it? And the way you guys have done it is so striking. I mean, it's it's fabulous. We will go back into that section. So people go. You know, if you go, oh, I miss it's the old the shop. Same. You know? yes, <laughs> you miss the old. And usually that's the case. It's not, yeah. it's not the same as the previous place, but you're bringing the exact yeah. same vibe over. To but here. history repeats itself. One floor, and then you move to the second floor, like exactly. we done in the first one. No, it's yeah. going to be so great. I mean, especially in our little centre here, it's amazing. It's vibey. It's happening. Yeah, it's, Everyone is together. It's, it's collective. It's definitely the area to be in. Family orientated. Now. I mean, yeah. for the kids as well. There's a whole area they're yeah. to run around. The beach is just down there at the bottom. Yeah, and but with the so grass patch and stuff out the front there i mean there's a lot of um charity work and stuff that goes on there and it, i mean that supports whatever money is raised there supports the 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 the, 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 uh, the uip of the area yes, you know the, yes. the area yeah so with with what with charities work and stuff that uh, myself and d do normally from contra yes. now we're next to each other so it's just going to be so much oh, more it's going to be, gonna be so much more fun and we'll definitely do a lot more and so on so no, exactly. it's easier now that we're neighbors you know oh so. you guys are going to have so much fun <laughs> <laughs> Fred, are there any specials currently running in mozambique that the guy should know about so this this month until the end of the month i think we've got one weekend left is a yeah. saturday special so we've got uh nine prawns for 89 rand oh so. wow yeah. So we should be there this Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> we definitely. should most definitely And it's going to run over the long weekend as well. So oh, it's not going to not, yeah, especially not run over the, the long weekend yeah. happening. And anything special for the Friday or Heritage Day? Um, yeah. So we're launching our, our a new thing that we have never done before. I've never, I've never, I've, but there's been a big call for it. And we, we tried it in our one shop and it's worked fantastically. So yeah. We're launching a mixed grill that's coming out and okay. that'll just be, uh, ribs, ribs, vors, and peri peri chicken. So we're trying to mix the South African and the Mozambican Jeez. up, and that'll launch uh, this weekend. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's 135, but don't hold me to or 125. But, it's really well but for priced. the value. I mean, it's yeah. value for money. Yeah. Oh, that is a great. I think yeah, I think um, the locals will be very happy with that combo. <laughs> <laughs> it's a taste of each palate yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. Jeez, but what you guys are doing are absolutely amazing. What the restaurant group is still doing for for their staff and for the community. I mean, you guys have really made yeah, such a difference. Yeah, it's good to see the restaurants busy again. It's a very yeah. worry when you when you sit with the with friends of yours and I mean we've all been we've all been through through COVID I mean we almost fall off the bus you know no, and trying to keep everyone perked up and going you know carry on we'll be fine we'll be fine but yeah. it has I mean the guys have have definitely got it and and Belita is such a great community you know they always support so much and no, most yeah. definitely. I think if we need to lift the hand up and say, I can help, everyone helps, or yeah. you know, if you need help. No, Brett, what you guys do is absolutely amazing. I mean, you're a well-known face in the area, and we thank you for all that you've done for the restaurant group. And we wish you all the best for your new ventures in America. I mean, please keep us updated. Oh. It's absolutely fantastic, and congratulations. I mean, cool. it's brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, thank and you. good luck with the big move. We can't wait to be there on the opening day. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know what day it is. I'm not sure, what, but it should be we'll the be sixth. We'll be keeping a fine eye on that <laughs> opening date because if you know what I know and if you've seen what it looks like down here, it's absolutely beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. You guys, what you do is always brilliant. Brett, thank you thank so you. much for coming in thank this you. morning, really. We're going to go to an ad break, and after the ad, we've got Yonitz van Skolkvay from RPSS Medical Rescue. We'll be right back. <laughs>
Welcome yeah. back to our Good Morning North Coast show on Valito TV. In studio, I've got Jonas van Skolkwijk. Just why am I battling with your surname this morning, Jonas? Yes, it's a Blue Monday. From IPSS Medical Rescue, Jonas, thank you for coming today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you for being up bright and early to join us. <laughs> yeah. Jonas, I know one of our topics is heart attacks and strokes, and I think it's a touchy subject for everyone, and not many people know what to look for, you know, how to prevent. What would you say are first symptoms of a heart attack? For an individual like myself, I might not be feeling well in order for me to call you to say, listen, I think I'm having a heart attack, please come and help. She's, you know, even before we get to that, I just want to emphasize the importance of, you know, getting or calling for help early on when you're presenting with the signs of a heart attack. Yeah. Um, not a lot of people realize that a patient's outcome following when they present with a heart attack is largely dependent on how long it takes you to get to a hospital and you know, for doctors to treat you. Yeah. One guy will have a heart attack, he gets to hospital within 45 minutes or hour, and he walks out of hospital two days later with no permanent damage, damage to his heart, and he can carry on living his life the way he does. And the next guy will sit at home as guys get a bit older and a bit more stubborn, you know, also maybe scared of hospitals and COVID. Of course. Sit at home a couple of hours before they finally decide, okay, no, she's, things it's are going pear-shaped, I need to go to hospital. And you might not necessarily you know, pass away from the disease, but you're going to walk out of hospital two weeks later with severe, uh, damage, yeah, to severe damage to your heart and your quality of life you're going to have after that is you know, extremely poor. You're going to be on medication, you know, with unable to enjoy simple activities. So, yeah. you know, when it comes to heart attacks and stroke, both of them, they're so, so, so dependent on getting to hospital early on. So when you talk about the symptoms, yeah. classical signs of heart attacks, crushing chest pain, in the center of the chest, it can radiate it down the left the arm or right arm. Oh, so there's no, because I know some people say, oh, no, it's the left or it's the right, but it could be either or, really. Yeah, and it's an atypical presentation that confuses people or causes a delay for, you know, for them to yeah. take longer to seek care. Yeah. It could be just centralized chest pain going into the neck or into the back of, center of the back. Sure. With females, sometimes they present with uh, epigastric type pain. Okay. Um, not exactly sure why specifically with females, yeah. but they tend to take some Gaviscar and sit at home, relax, let's and see. And you think you're none the wise of actually what's happening. Meanwhile, yeah, it's so it's misdiagnosis or treating at home and hoping to see or just waiting to see if it improves. Yeah, um, we're all guilty you, of that, eh? Hey? Yeah, and everyone's got the Gaviscar on hand. Everyone's when you feel got it, you just pop some yes, Gaviscar and see yeah, what you happens. Think it's hard, yeah. Uh, if you're diabetic, you might not even present with any pain whatsoever. You might, really? you might present with only maybe some difficulty in breathing, nausea, vomiting. Sure. And that is, I think, what causes the majority of the delays is the more subtle heart attacks or the ones that with atypical presentation. Sure. Scary, isn't it? I mean, especially if we're not educated. I mean, I don't know, like you say, I might feel like, you know, I've got heartburn coming along. And then your symptoms for a stroke, is it quite similar? Are there different symptoms? How would I differentiate when calling for help saying, look, I don't know if I'm having a stroke or if I'm having a heart attack? So with stroke, they've got a, quite a simple acronym, the FAST. So f first F for, for facial droop. Okay. You'll see the one side of the face, a uh, slight droop with the muscles where they're unable to control it. Yeah. Speech. Patient will have spurt, uh, like me. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> there go. I'm rubbing off on you yeah, this giving, morning. Giving you guys an <laughs> example. Slurred speech. So if you ask them to complete a sentence, they'll be slurring their words. Okay. And arm drift. So it's the patient having presenting with weakness in the one limb more than the other. It could okay. be left or it could be right. You can just ask so them right. to, to squeeze. And then the last one of the fast is time, emphasizing time. Okay. With strokes, it's even more time sensitive compared to heart attacks. Really? There's only a three hour window where they're able to intervene and reverse the effects of a, of a stroke. True. A lot of people, I think, are still under the impression you have your stroke, you know, what is done is done. The guy or the guys at hospitals, the, you get specialists and neuro interventionists that are able to remove those clots, but yes. the damage that gets done to the brain gets done within that first three hours. Jeepers. And if there's no intervention early on, whatever damage is done is permanent. That's scary. Yeah. Right? And one, one actually disregards the time factor when, like you say, we just kind of push it out and push it out and oh, you know, pop a pill and you, you're almost <laughs> too proud to call for an ambulance. You're almost too proud to go into the hospital and say, you know, I need help. Yeah. I mean, so proud, one of the issues, especially yeah. if you look at, I always look at my dad, you know, I proud, proud, yeah, dad, proud guy, yes, older big guy, he, he doesn't feel that he needs help. Yes. Um, so that's one of the factors. 
uh, people unsure of the symptoms, which we talk about, the lack yeah. of education regarding yeah. the signs and symptoms of a heart attack or a stroke. Yeah. Uh, people not having transport. If you look at the more rural areas, if you have a stroke at night, how are you going to get to a hospital? You can't call a taxi, you can't no. get there yourself. No. Um, people going to the GP instead of going through to a hospital. Not that I'm taking any way, anything away from GP. No, but, but that's what you initially do because you think I'm just not feeling well. Yeah, so I make an appointment, I, got a, I need an urgent appointment. Okay, cool, come through at 11 o'clock. And I mean, that time is so Your valuable time has and you're sitting in the waiting room. So it's scary, eh? Hey? Yeah, rather really over treat, get help early than yeah. you know, sitting at home and Jeez. waiting. And have you guys found, I mean, you're in the industry that lifestyle is related to more increase in heart attack and strokes, or do you find generally now you can't even attach a lifestyle to a heart attack and a stroke? So I think hereditary, if it's in your family, it's, yes. it's very, very common, and you'll see that through generations. Lifestyle, yeah. it's a massive thing. Of course. Um, in the past, Australia and America, those were the countries where, you know, everyone associates obesity Obe with yeah. massive cardiac disease. Yeah. But now, as... Africa is following in the footsteps and there's more fast food outlets, more culture of smoking, drinking, you know, Africa, uh, cardiac disease is one of the fastest growing diseases in sure. Africa. And it's, yeah, you know, all lifestyle. Yeah. I'm glad Brett's not here right now to hear that. Hopefully <laughs> 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 he's left the studio. <laughs> but it is scary, isn't it? I mean, and like you said, like the older people and your downtime recovery for a stroke, should one be bedridden after you've had a stroke or do you just go back into life, you ease into it? Or is it quite severe? Should you take some time off of work? So strokes, this is like similar to heart attacks. You get two different types of stroke. The one less common is hemorrhagic where there's a, a bleed in the brain. That's obviously yeah. a lot more severe because it's more difficult to treat. Yeah. Uh, with strokes, it's a clot that comes into the brain and affects a certain area of the brain. Um, the smaller the clot, the more distal will be and a smaller area of the brain will be affected. Okay. Where a larger clot will affect a much larger area. And all, the, yeah, all that brain that's distal on the other side of the clot gets no oxygen during that time of the clot. So if there's a large area of the brain that uh, was deprived of oxygen and eventually dies, yeah. it's, I mean, your downtime is going to be it's, it's permanent. Yeah. Yeah, you're unable so to do basic tasks at home. You're going to be oh, it's so sad, it's assisted living for the, basically for the rest of the time. Oh, it's so, so, so sad. Johannes, thank you so much for educating us today. Yeah, There's a lot that I've learned. And I'm sure the viewers out there too, like I know I couldn't tell the difference. And sometimes you get like a chest pain. You think, oh gosh, I'm having a heart attack. Meanwhile, you've just got a chest pain. Yeah. But those other symptoms we need to take into consideration. And guys, RPA says for medical are absolutely amazing. Call them anytime. It, I mean, what is your response time? It's quite good. It, it's it's that's yeah, always depending where you are, but yeah, yeah especially the in the Belita area, you <laughs> yeah. guys are right, yeah. Johannes, thank you so much. Awesome Have a super week ahead, and thank you so much for educating cool. us today. Cheers. We're going to go straight into the weather with Haley, and then we'll be back with Matt and um, with our musical video. Good morning everyone and welcome to your weather for today, brought to you by Benito Gas and Brian. Hierdie maandag weer is net so blau, soos die bokke sy game die nawerk. Today will be partly sunny with a thunder shower in spots in the afternoon. We have a high of 22 degrees and a low of 16 degrees. The real field will be 24 degrees and the real field shade 20 degrees. We have a southerly wind at 19 kilometers per hour and wind gusts at 30 kilometers per hour. Also a 41% chance of showers and a 13% chance of thunderstorms. The sunrise will be at 5.48 a.m. and the sunset at 5.50 p.m. Victoria has a high of 29 degrees and a low of 15 degrees. Joburg will have a high of 27 degrees and a low of 13 degrees. And Cape Town, a high of 17 degrees and a low of 11 degrees. Next up will be your surf report brought to you by Tino Tinskrijf Tool Fist and Dion Bosman from Victory Surf. We'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, Belito, and welcome to Monday Morning's Beach Report. 
Um, after that big Eastly yesterday, uh, we've got a welcome southwestly breeze that started already. And uh, it's going to blow up to sort of 20 knots by this afternoon and bring some rain again uh, later this evening. So get in the water, I would reckon, around midday before the wind gets too strong. Um, it is an east swell at the moment, so it's pretty, pretty uh, straight and very, very fast out there. Um, but as the wind blows, it's going to turn more into a southwesterly swell direction, so the waves will be more makeable. Still a nice 1.7 to 1.9 meter swell, but definitely will be blown out by this afternoon when the big west hits. So try and get in the water before lunch. Um, it'll be incoming tide, and the waves should be very good at the main beach. Uh, Check it out first um, because it is going to be a little rough out there as the wind gets onto it. Uh, hopefully it doesn't blow it out too quickly. Enjoy your Monday. We'll chat again tomorrow. Morning sports fans, let's kick it off with some football news starting with the Premier League and Chelsea powered to the top of the Premier League with an impressive 3-0 win at Tottenham while David De Gea has saved a stoppage time penalty to preserve Manchester United's 2-1 victory at West Ham after Jesse Lingard returned to haunt his old club on Sunday. In selected other results from the Premier League, Liverpool got the better of Crystal Palace 3-0 and also sit top of the standings, while Arsenal another victory away to Burnley. Uh, Man City and Southampton played up to a goal to straw, and Aston Villa getting the better of Everton 3-0. Moving to some local football now, uh, news now, and Mamelodi Sundowns claimed an impressive 3-0 win over TS Galaxy in the DSTV Premiership match played at Loftus Fasfeld Stadium on Sunday evening. As a result, the Sundowns toppled Swanee Giants Supersport United from the top spot in the league standings while the Rockets slipped down to 15 spots on the log. In other selected results, uh, Supersport United getting the better of Swallows 3-0 away from home. A disappointing result for the Chiefs fans as Royal AM thrashed them 4-1 at home and Pirates also doing the business away from home with a 3-1 win at Chipper United. Moving to some rugby news, and in case you missed it, uh, the Springboks slumped to possibly their worst performance since 2017 as they lost 30-17 to the Wallabies in their Castle Lager, Lager Rugby Championship match played on Saturday. Captain Seo Khaleesi promised the side would be better than the previous week where they lost to the same team, but this performance was arguably a lot worse as the Bucks' uh, defence fell to shambles and the scoreline flattered them in the contest that made the Wallabies look like world beaters. Speaking of world beaters, uh, All Blacks back to number one in the world in the World Rugby Rankings that will be announced a bit later today with an impressive 36-13 win over Argentina. Moving to some cricket news now, the Momentum Pro Tiers ended their outstanding tour of the West Indies on a low after losing their dead rubber last women's one-day international at the Sir Vivian R Richards Stadium on Sunday as stand-in captain for the Windies, uh, Deandra Dotton, starred with the ball as the host notched up a stunning super over win over the Proteus to end the five match series 4-1 via one over eliminator. After both teams finished on 192 in their 50 overs, the Proteus only managed to put up a score of six runs in the super over. In reply, the Wendy's just needed five balls to reach their reviewed target. Moving to some golf news now, and Sweden's Christoph Broberg held, uh, held on for a three shot victory at the KLM Open on Sunday after shooting a level par 72 in the final round at the Bernardus Golf Course in the Netherlands. Broberg's victory, Broberg's victory rather, uh, looked uh, like a formality after he began the day eight shots clear of the field, but the 35-year-old struggled for, for rhythm, uh, making bogeys on the third, 12th and 14th hole to finish 23 under for the tournament. Uh, Matthias Schmidt, who shot, a five, who shot five birdies in the front nine, looked set to catch Broberg, but the double bogey, uh, double bogey rather, on the par 3 13th cost the German deer as he ended with 6 under 66 to finish second. And finally, some MotoGP news. Uh, Ducati's Francesco Bagnini uh, won his home San Marino MotoGP with a dominant display from pole at the Misano uh, circuit on Sunday, while SA's Brad Binder finished ninth after starting 17th on the grid. The Italian, who celebrated his debut win in the Premier League category only last weekend at Aragon, uh, became under intense pressure from the championship leader Fabio Quattanaro in the closing laps. I'm Matt Williams for Good Morning North Coast Sport. Have yourself an awesome sporting weekend, a weekend, week rather, and we'll catch you back a little bit earlier this week on Thursday. And it's back over to Taryn. Thank you, Matt. Thanks Thank for you. our support. I hope you had a good weekend. I suppose yes. a busy one hearing all of yes, that. Yes, lots to get through. <laughs> a couple of tongue twisters there, but awesome uh, to bring you uh, 
the news. Do you have any free time over a weekend? I think uh, you just fixed yeah, between, a TV screen. Between, <laughs> between uh, wife and two, uh, two girls and uh, sports, I'm pretty busy. Oh, Matt, thank you. It's always great having you with us here Thanks in the so studio. Much. Thank you so much to everyone for tuning in with us today. It was great having all our, all our hosts here in studio as well. Don't forget to support everyone. Follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and please support all our causes, especially the Rise Up Movement, which will be taking place on the 24th of September. Well, that's it, folks. We're going to end off our day with the musical video of Kadasi. We'll see you soon. Keep well. Gube ya sensela. Gube ya sensela. Gube ya sensela. Amen. Yes.